So remember when we thought rotation was going to fix Druid? Well, it kind of didn't. So Druid's been doing the same thing for quite a while now. Their basic game plan is to get ramp early on I and then just kind of win the game because they have so much more mana than you do. And now more than ever, we're starting to witness the fact that Druid has gotten really consistent with drawing their ramp. But in my opinion, there's even a bigger issue. Did you know if you end up subscribing to this YouTube channel, the development team will actually end up nerfing Druid. When we look at Druid since the beginning of Hearthstone up until this point, we notice something that has always been consistent in the class, and that is ramping. It doesn't matter what year you go into, at some point in time, Druid was very keen on ramping past their opponent to get a bunch of mana crystals and do a lot of explosive stuff. In the early days of Hearthstone Classic, they had Innervate, which gave you two mana crystals, there was Wild Growth, and then there was Nourish. Fun fact about all three ramp spells in Classic, all of them were nerfed. Wild Growth and Nourished were increased by one mana crystal, and Innervate only gave you one mana rather than two. As we move to future expansions, Druid got a bunch of different ways to actually try ramping with minions. We had Darnassus Aspirant, Greedy Sprite, and Mire Keeper. And I actually really liked all three of these designs. I'm not sure why the design team went away from using minions to ramp. There was also Jade Blossom, but we're not talking about jades in this video. I think that's a completely different video. We move on to Breath of Dreams, which was released for Descent of Dragons, hence the idea that you need to be holding a dragon to gain an extra mana crystal. This card was just wild growth with extra steps. We then move on to Ashes of Outlands, which we have probably saw the strongest form of ramping that Druid has ever gotten with Overgrowth, but at the time it was released, it was not super great because it was literally four mana do nothing against Demon Hunter. Now, the reason why I bring up Demon Hunter for this is because we saw what was the main form of punishing a Druid for ramping. If you played Overgrowth against a Demon Hunter, you probably took a bunch of damage and that damage would basically just lose you the game because sure, you did get two extra empty mana crystals, but at what cost? We then move on to Skullman's Academy, which brought in Lightning Bloom, which was basically pre-nerf Innervate with a downside of two overloaded mana crystals. But due to the power level of cards being brought to Druid this year, it felt like the two overloaded mana crystals did not really matter because you were cheating out some very powerful effects like Guardian Animals. We then move on to Fracture and Altrac Valley, which Druid got Wild Heart Guff. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are aware of Wild Heart Guff, which is the strongest hero card that we saw introduced in that expansion. For five mana, you get five armor, you get a mana crystal, you draw a card, your maximum mana can now go to 20 instead of 10, which is double the amount of mana of every other class. But your hero power becomes draw a card or gain a mana crystal. Dude, this is a very good card. Now, that is all of the main ways that Druid has ramped over the years up into Voyage into the Sunken City. But the main thing over the past couple years is how powerful cards have gotten. And we saw this more than ever with Anixia's Lair, with the fact that Druid can ramp out Kazakasan extremely quickly and use Duel's Treasures to basically take over the game. It's not that Kazakasan is necessarily a broken card, but if you're doing these very powerful effects way before your opponent even has time to react to them, it kind of feels like they're broken and not necessarily the ramping. Ramping consistently as a Druid has been their most powerful attribute throughout Hearthstone's history, and with the most recent rotation, Overgrowth and Lightning Bloom were now moved to Wild, so we would not have to worry about really consistent, powerful ramping. Until you look at the core set for Druid this year, the Hearthstone development team decided to unnerf Nourish from 6 mana to 5 mana, and they also brought back Earthen Scales. Now, this is a much bigger deal than you probably think, but let's focus on Nourish first. Before I wanted to make this video, I wanted to try the deck out for myself, and that's exactly what I did. I played it on ladder, and I actually ended up getting Legend with this list. It turned out Druid is a lot better than I thought it was, and that is because the consistency of drawing ramp. So this is the list that I used to get Legend, and when you look at the list, it doesn't seem like it'd be super consistent to get ramp in the early game. With Aquatic Form, Jerry Rig Carpenter to draw a choose one spell, which Nourish is a choose one spell, and Moonlight Guidance, on top of every card in your mulligan and the cards that you draw, it is very easy to end up with a Wild Growth, a Nourish, and a Wild Heart Guff in the early turns of a Hearthstone game. And just by getting Nourish, Wild Heart Guff, or Wild Growth, the entire game is changed drastically. Now, it also helps a ton that Dozen Kelp Keeper is just a very good one drop to have in this deck. It helps you fight against aggressive decks, and it basically gets procced every single time you end up using Nourish. And when you look at the mulligan guide for this deck, you may notice that the highest 
Mulligan win rate cards end up being Wild Heart Guff, Wild Growth, Jerry Rig Carpenter, Dozing Kelp Keeper, Nourish, and Innervate. All of these cards end up making it so that you could ramp up early and get to your very powerful stuff in the late game. There is something though that I think a lot of people don't really notice when they look at this list. That is the lack of ability to actually punish the Druid when they do end up ramping. Remember when I brought up Dima Hunter and I said they would punish you if you played Overgrowth? It feels like right now that doesn't currently exist in Hearthstone. With their ability to draw ramp so consistently in the early game, you might think that their best drawn win rate card is actually these huge big stuff like Raid Boss and Nixia, but it actually ends up being Naga Giant and Earthen Scales. As you can see, looking at the drawn win rate, the best two cards are Naga Giant and Earthen Scales. Now, of course, Miracle Growth is good because it gives you cards after you ramp, but Earthen Scales is kind of surprising until you think about it. You punish Druid by hitting them in the face so their life total is low in order for them to actually make weird decisions even after they ramp. But if Druid has this ability to just play a 8-8 eight, eight, and then Earthen scales it for 9 armor like that, doesn't really matter what you end up doing because they're just going to get too much life for you to even punish them for ramping. Because they have such consistent ways to get the tools that they need, it ends up being this completely destructive package that is almost impossible to counter. Not to mention if you're an aggressive deck and they're able to get to 7 mana, they just play scales of Anixia and just full clear your board. Druid literally has everything in their kit right now to be an unstoppable deck. And if you look at top 1000 legend, you may see that ramp druid is a tier one deck with one deck being stronger than it. And that is Naga Demon Hunter. And the only reason that this is a tier one deck is because it punishes druid the most, which leads us right back to where we were with the Kazakasan druid just a couple of weeks ago. The metagame is so polarized by druid that something has to be done about it. When it comes to nerfing this druid deck, there are so many different ways to go about it. You could focus on the draw part of it, but that doesn't necessarily seem to be the problem. You could focus on the late game, and I do think Kazakasan might need to be touched eventually, but I think you should focus on the main problem, which is the ramp. And when you focus on the ramp part of Druid, there are four main cards to look at. There is Innervate, which I don't think is necessarily a problem. It's been like this for so long. I don't think we need to change this whatsoever. Wild Growth has been three mana for so long, and it's never really been an issue. So again, I don't think Wild Growth is what we need to look at. But these two cards, Nourish and Wild Heart Guff, are both an issue in their own rights. I personally think that making Nourish six mana is a much healthier change in the game because there is a lot more time to get under Druid so they actually get punished for wanting to ramp. If the Hearthstone development team ends up wanting to nerf Wild Heart Guff, I think the easiest change to do other than just making it like six, seven or eight mana is to change the hero power. It should just be gain an empty mana crystal rather than gain a mana crystal so you can't use that mana the turn you actually use your hero power and arguably it should be the same thing for actually playing Wild Heart Guff. You just gain an empty mana crystal. Anyways, that's the Druid rant. I hope you ended up enjoying the video. Let me know what you think down below and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.